What is the most expensive hotel in the U.S.? Hmm. Find out the answer to this question and more on this week's episode of Reality Check. Every week, we'll talk with an internet personality about what life costs and hear about their financial journey along the way. This week's guest is Christine Kaaloa. Christine is a female travel enthusiast who journeys across the globe solo and helps other aspiring world travelers do the same through her adventure-filled blogs and website. All right, well, let's just jump right into it. What is the most important factor of a credit score? That's a hard one. <laughs> it's it's so, honestly it's not something I look at every day. It's for a while I had it tucked away in the back of my mind because I was always afraid that I open it up and I'd see like identity theft in some way, shape, or form. Right. But uh, luckily my <laughs> my credit card company keeps like nudging me on that. That's a bad answer, that, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's okay. The that biggest factor is your payment history. So if you have delinquencies or bankruptcies or things like that on your account, that would affect your score 35%. And then some of the other things would affect it a little bit smaller, but it all matters. And I do feel obligated to say that you guys should check your credit reports on a regular basis. <laughs> you do want to know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, especially for the identity theft. <laughs> all right. Question two, and it's a multiple choice. What former U.S. president's face appears on a U.S. dime? Is it A, George Washington, B, Thomas Jefferson, C, Franklin D. Roosevelt, or D, Abraham Lincoln? It's on the dime. I want to say Jefferson. It is not. It is <laughs> it's Franklin D. Roosevelt. Okay. <laughs> It was one of the ones that I, that's not as prominent as the Penny and, and George Washington. All right. Question three. What is the most visited city in the U.S.? Most visited city in the U.S. I want to say either New York or Los Angeles. Yeah, you I want to say, say New York just because it's kind of like the epicenter of finance and and a lot of um, yeah, a lot of financial institutions and industries. Yeah, New York City with an average of fifty million visitors per year. Yeah, I totally can believe you're it. on the board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a strong city financially. Um, uh, a lot of superpowers there and and it's got a lot of great attractions and sites and yeah i love new york city love the culture so christine you've traveled the world obviously as a solo female traveler which i find simultaneously amazing but also terrifying how do you balance having those cool adventures and going out and seeing things but also making sure that it's a safe and positive experience um you know, I really believe in being proactive about things and being street smart. And that's the the most important thing. If you can prepare for some of it in advance, um, then it helps a lot by researching. Like I research like scams. I research uh, when I prepare or trip plan. I kind of coordinate things so that it starts off safe. You know, as soon as I come out from the airport. I know where my my hotel is. I've already got instructions. Maybe I, you know, uh, call an Uber or or even just getting instructions to like from using public transportation. Um, so I kind of like pre-plan. I think that's the most important part for me, as well as I do wing it a lot. <laughs> but <laughs> it's 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 knowing how to pre-plan certain things so that you start off very safe and you kind of have a nice structure, but at the same time being very street smart and um, kind of like being a little bit of a New Yorker, you know, keeping that window rolled up a little until people gain your trust and you get a little bit more familiar with the environment. All right. Question number four. You're on the board. You've got a point. So this is exciting. <laughs> All right. What is the average monthly cost of a gym membership in the U.S.? A gym membership. Oh, my friend just told me this yesterday. Um, he said like $30 a month. Oh, he is below average. He's lucky. It's actually $50. $50.03 cents to be exact is the average. All right. Question five. Another multiple choice. 
And I believe in your ability to get this one too, because this is right up your alley. What is the most expensive hotel in the US? So is it A, the Plaza Hotel in New York? Is it B, Disney World's Four Seasons? Is it the Waldorf Astoria in Beverly Hills, California? Or is it the St. Regis Princeville in Kauai, Hawaii? These are all places I've not stayed at. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? I want to say Disney. Just because- and you would be correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can believe that. I can believe that because they are an experience um, and a family fun one, but at the same time, just like the cost of, of like what a one or three day pass is, is pretty substantial. Yeah. They are $1,733 per night. <laughs> what? Yes. Disney World's Four Seasons. <laughs> but you have had some pretty cool hotel experiences in your travels. What would you say is a good tip for people to kind of follow to either score good deals on a hotel or maybe just find cool sort of unexpected hotel experiences when they travel. I'm trying to plan a trip right now. Um, and we're obviously trying to find the cheapest deals out there. Right. Uh, and Everyone wants a deal. I, I know. Uh, and you know, there are a lot of people who are turned off with the idea of hostels, but at the same time, hostels do have single rooms you know, mm. where you can like book your family in um, and like sometimes commune spaces. And the cool thing about staying at a hostel, if you are a female <laughs> or a solo traveler, is that there you sometimes have access to activities or like front desk help, like really good front desk help where they can tell you like the budget tours and all that stuff. All right. Question number six. You've got two points so far. Okay. What is the average monthly cost for car insurance in the U.S.? You know what? I really don't know that answer. <laughs> um, I use my family car, and and the deal is that I that I fill up the tank. <laughs> okay. Well, it is one hundred and thirty six dollars per month. That's about the average. So we always recommend people to shop around, make sure you're getting a the best coverage for your needs, and b that you're getting a good price. All right, seven. What is the most popular credit card network? Oh, I want to say it's either MasterCard or Visa, but I want to go with MasterCard. Aww. It's actually Visa. Those are the top two, though. <laughs> but it's Visa. A... Visa has 353 million cards in circulation. Really? So I know a lot of times traveling internationally for people can mean transaction fees or just other sorts of headaches when they're trying to access their money. Do you have any tips for people who are getting ready to travel internationally to make sure that they don't run into some of these headaches when they're trying to access their money overseas? I think with avoiding credit card fees, you definitely want to choose your credit cards well. Um, like get a good travel credit card where there are no fees. Like for me, I believe like I, I have... One I have is like with the credit union, um, I have an ATM card uh, with the credit union and that has no fees at all. When you go to the bank to like use your ATM card, just make sure you withdraw a good sizable chunk simply because whatever ATM you use abroad, you will probably get charged through your bank or your, um, through your bank as well as through that ATM system itself. So it's kind of like getting double charged. Okay. So I always right. like to, I like to withdraw a chunk um, whenever yeah. I the start of my trip. That makes sense. And I especially like the part where you said to choose a good card, like definitely know your fees and the type of card before you sign up, <laughs> before you sign up for it, know what you're getting into and know what you would be charged. All right, question number eight which is perfect for you because you said that you do this for your parents. What is the average cost of a gallon of gas in the U.S.? Well, see, I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be an average across the whole of the U.S. I want to say it's lower than. I want to say it's like maybe around $4. It's even lower. As of January 3rd, 2023, it was $3.23. What? I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're so ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I live in LA and, it, and it's pretty pricey here too, but it's still not, not Hawaii high. <laughs> yeah, like a few months ago, we hit $5. All right, question number nine. 
How much does the average American spend annually on health insurance? Annually, I want to say in the $400 range. That might be low, actually. It's actually about $3,700, $3,704 specifically. Wait. Is the average annual amount. Oh, annual. Annual amount. Okay, I was going for the monthly, sorry. Okay. Okay, I came in a little high. Yeah, it'd be a little high. All right, Christine. Time for the reality check, the final question. How old is the average first time home buyer? I want to say in their early 30s. Yeah, 33 specifically. <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought they were pretty young. I worked on a television show um, for HGTV and it was like one of those homeowner ones. And a lot of people that came, a lot of the talent that came in were all in that range. <laughs> yeah. I think that, I mean, obviously, I think home ownership is probably still a big goal for a lot of Americans. What's something that you maybe recommend to your clients or just people who are looking to get into traveling the world more? How do you kind of recommend them keeping themselves still on track with their financial goals and maybe avoid overspending when they travel? Saving is a big part of it. And I, I know that's probably the cliche. Um, but watching your budget in terms of what you're spending, you know, on a daily basis, like what type of, um, excessive things you're buying that you really don't need, like that Starbucks drink and whatnot, um, that carries over to your, your travel spending too, your budget. It's like the smallest things that can kind of tip the scale if you just kind of like keep spending. So I think watching your shopping in general. Um, and keeping it to essentials when you travel is is a good way to, to start um, noticing yeah. where your money is going. Absolutely. I think that kind of giving yourself a budget when you travel and maybe giving yourself a little leeway if you want to get a Starbucks is okay every now and then as long as you've built it into your plan before you leave. I think that that, I think you're right. I think that's huge. Yeah. When I first started out traveling, I did kind of keep with me like a little notepad that I like jot down all my, my expenses just to see how, what by the end of the day I was spending. And so sometimes I do, cause yeah. I just give myself like a $20 budget to spend. Like I'm like $20, that's all we're going to go out with. <laughs> you know, obviously that's in, you know, not Western countries, but <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, Christine, three out of 10, that is pretty good. <laughs> okay. <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You, you're on the board. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for playing Reality Check with me today. If people are feeling inspired or they want to see some of the different cool videos that I was talking about, how can they find you online? Um, just um, Google me on YouTube, Girl Traveler, uh, three R's. And I also have a blog at girltraveler.com. Um, check it out. And yeah, I will see you on YouTube. Awesome. And if you guys missed that, don't worry. You know I've got you covered. I'm going to drop it down in the description below so you can easily find there. Thanks again. Thanks for playing Reality Check. How'd you do? Let me know down in the comments below. And be sure to find out how this week's guest stacked up against all our other guests by watching the other episodes. I'll see you there. Bye.